the internet. It is Saturday the 26th of August 2023 and welcome back to the channel. Before we go any further into this live stream, this is not a tutorial. Just saying, if you've come to this video or this VOD thinking this is a tutorial on how to do this, that's not what it is. This is me <clears throat> trying to find out how to do it and asking one question before I go ahead and do it. Now, what the heck am I talking about? Well, last week I said I finished I finished paying off the nine grand debt I had on Govan. And from that debt, I was gonna to look towards buying a few toys and a few things mainly for Govan for live streaming. First thing I needed to buy was better lights. So I live in a rural area and I drive a lot at night for my job and there's kangaroos everywhere. And at the moment, driving in a 1997, yeah, 1997, no, 2002. Jeez, that was my other one. 2002 Mitsubishi Delica, even with high beams on, eh, it's lousy. Can't see jack crap. In fact, it's those old orange, like, kind of like orange amber lights and they don't really do anything high beam comes on it's like yeah it didn't really make any difference at all then you see other vehicles coming towards you and they have their high beams on and the whole thing's lit up like a christmas tree so i knew i needed to get better lights so the first thing that i bought for govan is the dominator extreme nine inch driving lights from the four wheel drive super center the brand is Kings. This is a pretty prominent brand in Australia for off-road outdoor adventure gear. I knew I needed the best possible, the strongest, the brightest, the bestest, and these are the bestest. I also knew that I'd need a light bar, and this is where I made my first mistake. So I bought a package of these two and a light bar. This guy, uh, this guy here, a 20 inch light bar. Turns out this is not what I wanted. I wanted one that was wider for my roof rack, which would make it a 40 inch. So I went ahead and re-bought it a longer one. So now I have a 40 inch light bar, two of these lights, the Dominator 8, the Dominator 9 inch LED driving lights, and I have a 20 inch light bar. The light bar looks like this. Ah, everything's falling over. Light bar looks like this. Very beautiful, very slick, very nice. It's going to be fun. The lights look like... Ah, oh, shit. And I do have... Uh, the reason I'm doing this stream is because I've watched their instructional video on their website, and we want to go through that today, because there's one question I have before I actually go out and tackle this myself on Govan. Let me show you what the light looks like. By the way, smash the like button if you're liking the light. Look at that, Even isn't that beautiful? Big, big light, should be fun. So, came with a lighting harness, and that's part of the question I've got today is this thing. So let's, let's take a look at the website for this product. From the four-wheel drive super center, can I make that larger? Yes, I can. Oh overlays these uh, over those on hover and there's a chat there as well i don't want to chat the king's dominator nine inch driving lights uh lux at 895 meters 15,000 lumens that's a lot of lumenses um and on special for 79 bucks it should be 120 now by the way this pricing that you see here seems to always be on special but um they do have descriptional product videos. I've already popped this one out. Let's take a look at the actual lights themselves. We'll go from there. Play skis. Is that loud enough? If you're after an affordable, reliable, and most importantly, bright set of LED driving lights, then check out the Adventure Kings Dominators. To start right. with, a pair of the seven inch lights output oh, 10,844 lumens. Whoa, 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 whoa. That is across a valley. And that's not the ones that I bought. That's the seven inch. 
Jesus, look at that, dudes. With a pair of the seven inch lights output 10,844 lumens with one lux at 684 meters. While a pair of the nine inch dominator driving lights throw a massive 15,464 lumens per pair and one. Oh shit, that is bright as, right? I mean, you're, you're seeing that distance. That is bright. Crikey. One lux out to 895 meters. <laughs> They're both real world lab tested lux and lumens figures. No overblown or exaggerated numbers here. The housings are made from tough die cast alloy and feature a breather to prevent condensation buildup. Both pairs of lights are fitted with one piece folded steel brackets for strength and include all the fittings required for an easy install. The lens is. I had a question about that actually. The easy install. In this packet that the easy install comes with, it's got a bracket, but only one? I don't understand that. Let me open it up and show it to you. It's got. Oh, shit. My bad. Okay, when I first opened it, they were stuck together and I thought, why is there only one of these? It turns out there's two of them. So there's two of them, there's two bolts and there is uh, two washers and two of those washers with the little bendy thing in them and an Allen key. So, okay, I was wrong. I'm just going through this as you would, uh, uh, you know, like me, someone that doesn't really know this stuff, when they get it in the mail, this is what to expect. That's what I expected. Polycarbonate, a super resilient material that's rugged and ultra clear for plenty of Ob light output. Sorry, obviously, obviously this plastic stuff is a dampener that goes between where it joins onto the vehicle so it doesn't get wobbles and all that sort of loud clanking noises, metal on metal. All Adventure King's LED driving lights are IP68 rated. That means they're dustproof and waterproof to more than one meter for 30 minutes. That's so handy. you know they're up to the task, whether you're off-road or need them for poor road conditions. The nine inch housing measures in at 245 millimeters by 227 millimeters by 101 millimeters deep. For maximum light output, grab the nine inch dominators. But if you've got a modern bull bar and you need a compact LED light, then grab the seven inches. They measure in at 194 millimeters by 177 millimeters by 85 millimeters deep. Dominator driving lights use Deutsch style connectors, which make them super. Deutsch style, German style. They're easy to wire up with an Adventure King's plug and play smart hunt. And that's what I have here. And we'll talk about that as well, because I want to go through just probably a simple question, but we'll get to that video as well. Harness. Available separately or as a combo, so you can get an even better deal. And Adventure King's lights will run on either 12 volt or 24 volt, so they'll suit just about any vehicle. So if you're after a no-nonsense cool. pair of LED driving lights for your daily driver, your four-wheel drive, your truck, or even machinery, then you simply cannot beat the value of the Adventure King's Dominators. And with the two-year warranty, the rugged build, and the IP68 rating, you've got peace of mind in any conditions. Very cool. So that's what I bought. Uh, of course, I, it does mention there it comes with, uh, well, the kit I bought came with the lighting wiring harness. So let's go and take a look at that. They call it a smart harness. Um, uh, all the overlays. Smart harness plug and play spotlight wiring harness. Easy DIY install. Deutsch plugs for 40 bucks. Um, and of course, in here as well, there is a product video. Now, this is what I want to look at because this explains how to install this, but there is a question that I have, which it seems to not really mention for a complete noob, but I'll stop when I get to that and um, I'll ask that question. Wiring up a set of spotlights or an LED light bar has traditionally been a nightmare and it's something that many people traditionally shy away from, but I'm going to show you just how it... He just used traditionally twice. You shouldn't do that. Let's hear it again. Wiring up a set of spotlights or an LED light bar has traditionally been a nightmare. And it's something that many people traditionally shy away from. But traditionally in Australia, there's an easy way to do things. On the install guide from Adventure King's plug and play smart wiring harness video in the tradition of tutorials. And by the way, this is a very quiet live stream. I'm earlier than usual. My niece is here with her partner, so I'm gonna hang out with them, but I'm earlier than usual, but I do see uh, one watching and two likes. So I appreciate that. Um, if you are watching the replay, uh, like I said, this is not a tutorial video. This is just a description and I want to learn how to do it, but do smash the like button if you found it 
uh, educational. There isn't a great deal about these lights online aside from these videos. And I think these are unlisted as well. This one's not, but the um, this this Adventure King 7-inch, 9-inch Dominator LED driving lights features, that is an unlisted video, which is kind of strange. Very, very strange, but this one's not. But I'm going to show you just how easy it is to wire up your new LED driving lights or light bar using an Adventure King's plug-and-play smart harness. In fact, it's so... See, right there, that was, that was the first question I had when he said... ...away from. But I'm going to show you just how easy it is to wire up your new LED driving lights or light bar. See, when he said or light bar, that sort of tripped me up because I was like, well, I've got I've got both. I've got the light bar, I've got two light bars, and I've got the the LED, what are they, the driving lights. And I was like, oh, can you only do one with this? Because he said or, but I got that bit wrong. Using an Adventure King's plug and play smart harness. In fact, it's so easy that there is no cutting and there is no soldering required. All Good. you need is your new driving lights or your light bar, the Adventure King's plug and play smart harness. You need a couple of spanners to undo your battery terminals, some cable ties to neaten up the wiring at the end. And if you've got a bit of electrical tape and a wire coat hanger, well, I'll show you a great trick that you'll absolutely love. If you need to skip ahead, here are the starting points for specific sections of this video. First, we'll talk about the plug and play harness and what each component of it does. Then we'll start by mounting the harness in your engine bay. Next, we'll connect the harness to your headlights. After that, we'll run the cables down to your spotlights or your light bar. Ah, he clears it, clears it up your right headlights. there. After that, we'll run the cables down to your spotlights or your light. Bam. Interesting. So, the, yeah, so the, 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 he explains it. And by the way, I'll just stop here for a second and say, isn't this wonderful that this... So the four-wheel drive Supercenter and Kings in Australia, they've got this kind of nailed down, right? Like it's it makes it easy for an absolute kook like me to do this stuff. If you're watching this video from outside of Australia and you're thinking, well, does my country have a four-wheel drive supercenter and King's alternative? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know, but Australia seems to have this shit laid down. And I've looked on their website at other products and it's all very, very easy to digest. It's like, instead of faffing around in, in, the, in the workshop trying to get this shit sorted, it's just a case of watching a video buying the product and doing it. I, I love this. It may, like I've always said, I'm not very good with vehicles, but this is making me learn, helping me learn. Hey, Redox, hello, Gibbs. How you doing, man? How you doing, Redox? Do you have a four-wheel drive supercenter like this in your part of the world, Redox Bear? Good to see you, man. Bar. Then it's a case of running the switch into the dash. And finally, we'll do a light check and finish off the install. Now, as we go through this, just Think about it from a noob's point of view. Uh, so these lights, with this harness, the way that these lights work is that it connects into your existing light setup so that when you flick your high beams, these lights come on with the existing high beams. So when I was thinking about that, I was hoping that they'd explain in this video exactly how you can tap into your existing light feature and add an additional, basically you're adding more lights to your existing lights. And I guess I overlooked it because he does explain it, but it wasn't very clear. So we'll, we'll check it, we'll check it. First, let me go through what's in the box and what every component does. Now, when you first open the box, it might look a bit daunting, but bear with me because once we delve into it, it's very easy to understand. In the box, you'll have this main bundle of wiring that's cable tied together, this smaller bundle of wiring, these two nearly identical pieces here, and one of these black boxes with a metal tab called relays with 24V marked on it. Undo the cable ties off the main harness and lay it out like this. Lay it out. You can see the very top of the harness has this relay and the relay holder. Now, the relay that's fitted to the harness when it comes out of the box has a 14 VDC marking on it. That means that it runs Bingo. on 12 volt system for most cars and four wheel drives, Bingo. Units, vans, that sort of thing. The only time that you will need this other relay is if you're installing it into a 24 volt truck or machinery, but for no. most of us, we can put that aside. We won't. 24 volt truck. I've only got a, a 2003 Mitsubishi Talika, 12 volt. Need it. 
So next what we've got here is our positive and negative power cables. So they go directly to your battery. If you follow the red cabling down, you'll see there's an inline fuse holding. Now, of course, because we're working on electrical cabling, we need to remove the fuse and set it aside somewhere safe until we're ready to install it again. I've already done that. My fuse has been removed. Right at the end. And just as a bit of an aside, if you ever do need to replace that fuse, every car parts store or most service stations have replacement ones. However, that's a 25 amp fuse and it must be replaced with an identical 25 amp fuse. Next, we've got the wiring that goes down to the in-dash switch. And that's where I had a little confusion. That switch looks like this, but how does this switch, it's, I, I, got, I got stuck. I thought, how does this, how does this know we're using the main lighting? And I think I've answered my own question. Having watched this video once already, I think I know what he's gonna say. And I guess I missed that in the initial viewing, but check it. Now we've designed this harness to ensure that your driving lights or light bar remain completely legal when this is installed. And for that to happen, a couple of things must happen. First of all, your light bar or your driving lights have to only be able to be turned on with your high beam stalk. Mm. Cancelled when you turn your high beams off. But as well, they need to be able to be separately switched so that even if you have your high beams on, you can still turn them off and just use your normal high beams. I guess that must be a registration or a regulation in Australia. So you can't have you can't have a separate switch to turn on high beams that are additional high beams. You can only trigger the high beams from the trigger point that already exists in your vehicle, and that must that must turn on the manufacturer's high beams and your additional ones. And in addition to that, you also must be able to turn those high beams off so that you only have the manufacturer's high beams on. That's fair enough. Australia is loving their rules. They got rules coming out the wazoo. We know that. There's a rule right there. You might think that's a bit strange, but that's Australia. Um, but that's still what I that's what I was kind of struggling with. Like how does the how does this how does this switch know that it's connected to the main manufacturer's high beams? He gets to it, but yeah, he gets to it. And for that, in a moment, we're gonna run this switch wiring into the dash. So the next length of cabling is this one here with the white T-shaped plug. It connects to one of those two supplied headlight piggyback adapters that plug into the back of your headlight. Uh, and his final length Did you hear that? So he's talking about either of these two, and he said... So the next length of cabling is this one here with the white T-shaped plug. It connects to one of those two supplied headlight piggyback adapters that plug into the back of your headlight. And his final... So what he didn't really indicate there is that these are two different pieces, um, an identical junction point, but with separate plug points for different headlight varieties. Now, what he doesn't explain and what I'm assuming happens here is this goes into your existing light and then piggybacks off to your new lights. So it's a splitter. And the reason there's two is because headlights have changed over the decades. You might have older version, you might have the newer version. This could be the newer, that could be the older, that could be the version. I don't, I don't know, but he's given you two options there. One of them you'll throw away, one of them you won't need. Um, but yeah, I'm assuming that's where the goods of this happen. It splits it. That's what I, it, it doesn't say that, but that's what I've concluded. A length of wiring that goes down to... What, how, hold, what's this? Is this one here with the white T-shaped plug. It connects to one of those two supplied headlight piggyback adapters that plug into the back of your headlight. The piggyback is the key word. And this final length of wiring that goes down to the grey plug with the orange seal on it, that goes to your spotlights or to your light bar. If you're just running a light bar, then it goes directly into that. If you're running a set of spotlights, you use the included two-way splitter to plug into both lights. So, so, so right there is what he's explaining, and I've already plugged my splitter in. I'll just pop off there because I've plugged in my splitter because I've obviously got two light bars to think about. So these will go to the main lights with the, the T-bar splitter, one of these two. And then further down the chain goes this cable, which then goes off to a T intersection for both light bars. Now I've seen an, I see a, an issue here. This doesn't look long enough to go from the roof where I'm putting the 20 inch light bar. This does not look long enough to go from the roof rack to also, sorry, that's where the 40 inch one, the, 
is it 30 or 40? It's 40. So that's that's got to go to the roof of the vehicle, and then this one has to go to the to the bull bar where the number plate one's going to go. And I don't reckon that's long enough. I reckon that's going to be tight. But then again, there's also no, there's not. It's already split all. But there are options to buy uh, four meter extension cables of this. So if it needs to, I'll put it all in and I'll just buy the extension and run that once I've wired it all up. But I don't reckon that's long enough as it stands. See, I told you there's nothing to it. Installing <laughs> this wiring harness is no more difficult than putting an awning on your roof rack. Okay, let's get into it. Well, that was a hard process for me putting an awning on because I tried to fit everything into a 2.7, 2.4 meter garage. So my awning was a nightmare, but I've got it all on and it fits in perfect. Then the solar panel goes on and it still fits in. So that was pretty hard for me to do. I live by the beach, so I need to have everything do you know what that's a side side issue for a side stream does garaging a vehicle change anything if you live by the ocean like in terms of longevity for the vehicle's rust proofness i don't think it does because well mine's fine but just because you're inside the garage there's still salt in the air right although you could say salt water is heavy so it sits to the ground and the air in the garage is quite stagnant. So most of it would sit to the, I don't know. Either way, when I used to park Stevan outside, damn, it got nailed by the, the nor'easterly blowing in off the Tasman Sea. So I'm garaging Govan from the day I've got it. Mounting the harness in the engine bay. So the first thing we're gonna do is mount the relay into the engine bay. A couple <coughs> of things you wanna do here, First of all is mount it as close to the battery as possible. That's because you need to run these cables to the positive and negative of the battery and they're only relatively short, so you need to mount it quite close to the battery. The second thing we're gonna do is make sure that when we install it, there's plenty of room for this wiring to drop away underneath. What you don't want is this wiring to come out at an acute angle because in a worst case scenario, you can actually pull the wiring out the back of the relay holder. So ideally what you want is somewhere that you can mount the relay that has about three or four inches of room underneath it for the wiring to fall away. Interesting he's saying to make sure that the wiring falls away because don't forget you still got to get in to get to that fuse as well. That's before it starts to curve. Okay, so now double check that you have removed that fuse from the fuse holder and we can connect the positive and the negative to the battery. And one of the big benefits of these forked terminals is that you don't actually have to remove the bolt the whole way. You can just undo it, right. just slip it in tighten it back up. Forked. Now the next step is to connect that white T-shaped plug to one of the two supplied headlight adapters. In the box you get two of the most common headlight adapters to suit the most common types of headlight bulbs. So connect those two white T-plugs together and push them in place until they firmly... Hey Hexy Mofo! How you doing? How you going man? What 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 what? Good to see you buddy. Hope things are well for you man. Buy that dip. Buy the dip. I'm still buying the dip. We'll talk about that in a moment or once this is finished. But how about the chances that are presented for us right now? Pulse and pulse chain, it's at an all time low. Oh, Click yeah. in. Then you're left with these two black plugs. Unplug one of your headlights and oh, hold on, I missed all that. He he connected the T types of headlight bulbs. So connect those two white T plugs together and push them in place until they firmly click in. Right. Then you're left with So white on white. So whichever one it is, and I don't know which one it is yet, because I haven't I haven't looked into Govan, but what he's basically saying is, if it's, that's the, that's the cable run. If it's this one, connect that white one to that one. If it's not that fitting, which I think it is from memory, because I had a problem with my light, but either way, those two go on there. And then, it's together and push them in place until they firmly click in. Then you're left with these two black plugs. Unplug one of your headlights, and these are going to run in between. So you connect that into the plug you just removed, and that goes into the back of the headlight globe. Let's get into it. Okay, so you only need to do it to one of them. So you only need to only do it to one of the lights, not two of them? You're left with these two black plugs. Unplug one of your headlights, and these are going to run in between. So you connect that into the plug you just removed, and that goes into the back of the headlight globe. Let's get into it. Yeah, okay. So... He yeah, okay, so for a complete noob like me, you don't need to do it to the two lights. It's just sending the signal is what you need. So so it's just cutting the signal out. Um, it's, it's cutting into the signal. 
how you do this may vary depending on vehicle model, but you'll likely need to remove a dust cover like this. Yeah, mine's Gently got that. Gently but firmly wiggle the connector off the back of the headlight and connect the piggyback adapter to the back of the headlight and to the plug you just removed. Now, neatly feed this white T-plug down through your engine bay to the headlight so you can connect it to the corresponding white plug on the end of the piggyback adapter. Take your time to tuck it all away neatly so it doesn't hang loose. Push the it would have been good right here if you had a said spelled it out and said, look, you only need to do this to one of the lights instead of going both sides of the vehicle. Uh, Hexy, so it just uses the headlight signal to trigger the relay which connects the load to the battery. That's what I understand. But like I said at the beginning, I'm a complete noob with it when it comes to this. And unless it's really obviously said to me, I need to sort of, it needs to be walked. I need to be walked through it because, um, yeah, I'm not really good with this stuff. Anything tech, you know, like computers and stuff, I'm fine with. In fact, I'm quite good at. But here when it comes to like grease and oil and uh, motor vehicles, I'm lost. Well, I'm not as lost as I used to be, but I'm certainly not, I'm not great. Two white connectors together until they click into place. But don't cable tie or tape it into position just yet. We'll neaten up all the wiring together at the end. So the next step is we're going to take this grey plug with the orange seal and we're going to run it down to connect to the light bar or to the spotlights. Now, do yourself a favour at this stage. Take a moment to make access down to the lights as easy as possible. Often that might mean removing the grill. Wait, so that's going on. So now he's using... He's using... Wait a second. Now I'm a little lost. So that thing there is only going to your existing lights. This will go to the spotty and the light bar. So I'm going to need to split this up again. So that goes into the back of the dominator lights, is that right? Okay, so, yeah, 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 okay, so I need a, I need to run another splitter off this then, fully, yeah, okay, I, I, I kind of miss, I misunderstood that, um, this white thing, as Hexymofo just said in the chat, this is just getting the relay trigger. That's all that's for. That doesn't go, I thought that somehow went into the light itself, but that comes off here. Okay, fair enough. So I need to get another splitter then. I need to get another splitter to make this work. Dusky, how you doing man? How you doing Doug? Uh, do the spotlights have a pass-through output? No. They do not. They're just a sealed unit. No pass-through. Yeah, they're an endpoint. It's like a Thunderbolt 3 on a um, sound card that doesn't have another Thunderbolt port. Yeah, but I, I, I definitely misunderstood that. But it turns out, because I bought the package with the wrong light bar, remember I told you I bought the 20 inch one first, that came with a lighting harness. So I actually have another unopened one of these, which will include another splitter. So I'm already good with what I've got. So I should actually have enough, in, including the secondary splitter in here, the second wire split, I should be good to go because that came one of them one of them came with the package the other one I had to buy individually it's all good I'm just trying to plot it out myself but it's all good but in this case what I'm going to do is just pop out these plastic clips remove this top access cover so take a moment and have a look at the best way to run the wiring down through past the radiator support panel. You'll typically find there's usually some sort of access hole often where the air conditioning pipes run out through the front of the engine bay there 
just make sure that you keep the wiring away from any sort of engine fans. So if you're installing a light bar, then this goes straight into the back of the light bar plug. But if you're installing spotlights, then you use that included two-way splitter. Right. Push the connector into the light until it clicks firmly into place. Leave the grill or the access panel off for the moment. I wonder if there's any limit to how many things you can Y, like Y cable off. Can you go one, two, three, four and keep junctioning off? I don't know. How easy is that? We are cruising through this installation. Pretty easy. Now all that's left to do is put the switch into the dash. Now this is a tiny little bit fiddly, but as I mentioned before, I've got a trick that can help here. Hexy, you have to calculate total amperage or run a second relay to make sure it can handle the load. Right, right, makes sense. I mean, I'm, I'm only doing the two lights and the two light bars, so I should be okay, right? It's not nothing too fancy. In fact, what I could do is wire up the main light bar and have the secondary one there and just see if, it, I mean, I, I'm only wiring up the second number plate one or, or the, the second one here because I bought it. I don't really need it. like. Total amps add up, check the fuse for the relay for amps. Interesting. Check the fuse for the relay for the, it's a 25 amp fuse. And I guess I should, yeah, it's a 25 amp fuse. Well, I guess we can check that now, can't we? The amperage on this light bar, let me just do this while we're here. Um, does it tell me that here? Dimensions. Doesn't say it here. I guess we could find it though. Go back to the website. Check. The, we'll check the amperage off the lights first. Uh, da -da 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 specifications. Uh, amperage. Twenty two hundred forty two watts doesn't give you amperage, does it? There's a manual there though. Um, find amp, tampering, nope. Hmm, okay. How do you work out the amps if you just got the watts? What? All I've got ugh, these are, these on a these hovers are stupid on a website. Hey, should be click. Um, does anyone know how to work out amperage from wattage? How to calculate amps from watts? How to convert watts to amps. Watts divided by volts equals amps. Oh, that's su stupidly easy. Uh, Hexi, amps equals volts divided by watts. Dude, that's so, I mean, like I said, I don't know much of this shit, but I'm learning, right? Calc me later. So the watts divided by volts. What was the watts again? Watts divided by... So 242 watts divided by 12 volts. So four, oh shit, it's gonna be close, dude. Oh shit, 242, what, what, what was this formula again? Uh, 200 uh, watts divided by volts equals amps. Watts divided by volts. So 242 watts divided by 12 volts, because that's the um, that's the relay thing that we're using. Actually, this is this says 14 on it. This says 14 on it. So we got a little bit of extra to play with. We'll change 12 to 14. That's uh, 17. You have two kits so you can run two relays. Oh shit, interesting, I didn't think of that. Yeah, true. I could run the two relays. Yeah, of course. 
Of course. Well, as it stands, so that so let let's keep seventeen in our let's keep seventeen in our um, storage there because that's that's the um, the LED driving lights. But we've also got the light bar. So let's take a look at the forty-inch light bar. Forty-inch laser light bar. This is the one that I bought here. Um. That is the one that I wrote. 40 inch slimline. I think it's different. 40 inch slimline. Slimline mark. 40 inch slimline. Go away, chat. Just want to see what the amperage for this is. Oh shit! Well, that's the that's the wiring harness. What? Ah, on all these hovers, man. The relay only takes a small amp to activate it from the headlights. The trigger from the headlight will not be an issue. So you say you saying I can run these extra lights from the one kit? Uh, let's see what the specs for the light bar is here. What? Okay, so 40 inch lethal light bar, amp draw, 10 amps at 14 volt, 14.4 volts. So at, they've already got the amperage there for us. So add 17 and 10 makes 27. And we're running a 25 amp fuse so if i understand correctly that's over the top no you can run two re relays from the headlights okay so you're saying i should use both of these these wiring harness kits put them in put them in jewel makes sense right and it would make sense to run the these lights off one and both both light bars off the other one yeah makes sense because they're both they're going to the same battery yeah that makes sense yeah okay cool thanks man thanks for clearing that up with my um my limited knowledge here it's handy getting tips from hexi awesome yeah that that's cool man i'm look look like i said at the very beginning of this this is not a tutorial this is me walking my way through it so that i don't faff it up because what i will do i will go and put this together and then i will do a test of it tomorrow night when I'm driving tomorrow morning start at six yeah it'll still be dark and I'll 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 shoot a little dash cam video of of what it's like with just the regular ones and then BAM turn these suckers on and we'll see how bright it is that'll work well cool man thanks dude appreciate that let's go back to the install guide it's almost done so what you need just a little bit of tape oh th this is how he's pu pushing it through the firewall how easy is that? We are cruising through this installation. Now all that's left to do is put the switch into the dash. Now this is a tiny little bit fiddly, but as I mentioned before, I've got a trick that can help here. So what you need, just a little bit of tape and a wire coat hanger. Let me show you how to do it. So we're gonna take these three wires off the back of the switch. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tape the wires to the end of that straightened out coat hanger. And that way we've got a perfect tool to help run through the grommet on the firewall. So before you do that, here's a great little trick. Take a couple of photos on your phone of how each of these three wires sit in relation to each other and also to which end of the switch the LED light is on. That way when it comes time to put them back on, super easy to figure out which wires go to which terminals. Right. And a word of warning here, when you're wiggling these wires off the back of these terminals, don't pull them by the wire because you can risk pulling the wire out the back of the connector. Grab them around the metal connector, just give them a little wiggle. And Take a photo first. Off. Grab your wire coat hanger and untwist it. Then use your tape to firmly tape the ends of the three wires to the end of the coat hanger like this. Wrap the tape firmly up the coat hanger in the- Those LED lights are awesome. Daylight bright. Yeah, dude. Did you see the start, man? Check check this out. Check this out. This is the video of the, um, of the lights. Check this out. Now I've got the nine inch ones. Check this out. This is the seven inch. All a pair of the nine inch dominator driving lights throw out the 10. Hold check on, hold out on. the Adventure Kings dominators. To start with, a pair of the 7-inch lights output 10,844 lumens. 
That's the seven inch ones. That's cr across a valley. You could spot a deer down there. That's incredible. With one lux at 684 meters, while a pair of the nine inch dominator driving lights throw a massive 15,464 lumens per pair. That's the, that's, I've got that plus the light, but I got the, the that's incredible, dude. Um, I put LED headlights on both my old cars. What a difference they made for the better. White light instead of a yellow. That's, dude, Doug, I, I mentioned that earlier. Driving all hours of the night like I do, I don't see the kangaroo until it's right in front of me. They look the same color. Kangaroos are gray. Sometimes they're red, but down here they're the gray ones. They look like the bush. You don't even see it until it's right there in front of you with these old school halogen yellow lousy light you need bright white light to light everything up i'm so psyched to be putting this on on the first thing i bought for govan i'm so psyched looks amazing where are we here wiring about six inches so the wiring can't come free now you've got the perfect tool to feed the wiring through your firewall locate a rubber grommet that factory wiring passes through and feed the end of the coat hanger through it alongside the other wires don't poke a new hole in the grommet as this risks letting water run inside your vehicle if the engine bay gets wet. It might take a bit of wiggling and a few attempts, but eventually you'll be able to find the end of the coat hanger up under the dash. So I spent a little bit of time and I've neatly run the wiring up into the center console here. Now every vehicle's different. You need to decide where you want to mount your switch. Could be up on the dash here, down the center console, generally anywhere I've, you can. I've got a spare slot right there on, on Govan. It's one of those slots for it like coins, you know, it's got like a little U shape and you can put coins in it. What the hell are coins? <laughs> so I pulled that out and I got a vacant slot right there. And just easily access it while you're driving. So look out for one of these blanking plugs. You can usually just pop them straight out with a thin bladed screwdriver and just replace them directly with that included switch. So we're right. gonna go ahead and use those photos that I took earlier to make sure that I connect the correct cables to the correct pins on the back of the switch here. Just yeah, one final note. Once you've connected them, just make sure that these little rubber insulation sheaths are Blue, firmly white, in black. place. Cool. Now you can return to the engine bay and refit the fuse into the fuse holder. Make sure it's pushed in until it's completely snug. That's going to be sick. Your lights are now fully connected and it's time to give them a test. Start your car, turn your lights on and hit the high beams. The driving lights should turn on and off with the in-car switch and should also cancel when you dip back to low beams. So once you're all done in there, just push that switch firmly back in place and that's all the wiring done. The final step, just to go through all the wiring, a couple of cable ties just to neaten it all up, make sure that it can't move Too anywhere. easy, right? <laughs> and how easy was that? I told you it was a piece of cake. Super simple. An LED driving light or light bar installation can be that easy if you use an Adventure Kings plug and play smart harness. So what I'll do here, I will put that link in the chat for anybody that wants to watch that video again and i'm also going to put this link to that product in the chat for anybody that wants to purchase hey 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 hey, hey. what's all that playing in the background get out of there yeah for anybody that wants to purchase their own uh set of driving lights i'm not too sure if four-wheel drive super sender ship outside of australia but you're welcome to check that out for yourself um even if they don't you can probably find a similar product in your own town. I don't know, but I'm just stoked that Australia has, because we've got such a big, such a big brown land out there to go and explore. And there's all these cool gear and tech to make it easier for you and to, like someone like me that, let's be clear, I just want to get out there and live stream and I want to do it the best I possibly can. I don't really want to get too bogged down in the, the hardware of, of the vehicles, but this does make it a pleasure, makes it easier, makes it more understandable. With that in mind, just thinking logistically, um, because I'm going to now run the two harnesses, I'm going to just check exactly what that looks like at the end point, because what did he say? Like, let me just let me just clarify it one more time in my mind. If you've got one, so when when would you ever need? How does that come out? Does that go up and out? Down and out. Yeah, down and out. So, just out of curiosity, when would you ever just use this? 
Like, would you would you wire all this just to one lighting bar? As it stands out of the out of the box without the without the uh, the wire splitter without this, you could run this one cable into one light. But if you're going to run it into driving lights, you have to use the splitter. So that's what the split is for here. So the split is here for those two. So then with that in mind, because I'm going to run the two light bars, this would be each one of the light bars has their own. Yeah, so I'm good. The only issue I might have is that the cable run might not be long enough to go straight from um, the roof rack down into the to the dash. But either way, I'm good to go and do that. Um, Hexy, we we're going to talk a little little about Pulse Chain and Pulse X. Can we leave that to another time? Because I, I have got my niece here and, and her partner. I haven't want to go and hang out with them. It's just, it's just yeah, they're, they're probably awake now as well. They sleep a lot. I got in last night at 1 a.m. and I woke up at 7 a.m. and I went and checked the surf. No, there's no swell today. It's like a, it's the perfect day to install LED lights to a vehicle because there's no swell. There's no surfing. Um, it's like a lake out there. It's, le it's like so still out there. It's crazy. But um, I did want to talk about it, but maybe we'll hold it off to another time. But um, Pulse and Pulse X at an all-time low. Now's the time to, um, not financial advice, but if you are DCAing, it's the good time to be doing it. All good, probably all red through September anyway. Dude, it's it's going to be, a, I feel like this is going to be a long time down, at least until we hear something about dates for a court hearing or if Richard Hart's going to go up against the SEC or if he's going to just settle. I reckon he's going to go up against them. If he goes up against them, that'll end up in a court hearing. So I think it's going to be pretty down for quite a long time. So I'm pretty stoked. I'm really, really, really psyched that I've finished paying off my nine grand debt. And now any extra income that I have can go into Govan for, for toys like this or into some crypto for long-term gains later on down the trail. But um, yeah, thanks for being here and appreciate everybody. Uh, I see four watching and uh, two watching and four likes. That's appreciative. I'm appreciative of that. If you did like the content and you learned something from it, uh, smash the like button. Um, if you're just watching this replay and you're thinking, okay, this guy's got not much of a clue, then also smash the like button so I get more of a clue. Is that working? Not really working, is it? Either way, just enjoy yourselves. Get out there into the great Aussie outdoors. Watch out for kangaroos, wallabies, wombats, meat pies, footballs. See you later. Yeah,